Duke might be in charge now, but he won't be running things forever. Someday, someone is gonna take his place. And when they do, you'll want them to be a friend of yours. Is that so? Defeating Baxter doesn't make him immortal. The Duke might have the fort now, but remember, no one thought Baxter could be overthrown, and where is Baxter now? So you want to replace the Duke? Look at me and tell me I wouldn't make a better leader. And once I roll, Nasty will be at my side as my war leader, working closely with each other. <laughs> Very closely. And we could use someone like you. Or are you all talk? Come on, get the drink, take the deal. The future is waiting for you. You should start listening to people in the know. Or you're gonna get left behind. What makes you think you can take over from the Duke? Focus, discipline, and power. I'm focused on my goals, disciplined in my focus, and I focus on my goals. And my goal is power. And my secret weapon? I'm a people person. Unlike the Duke, people love me. They can see I'm a winner. They know I have enough followers to sweep the other factions from Magalan. Believe in the big gym plan and feel the power inside you. And for early adopters, I'm offering a stack of grenades as a special gift, if I can get someone to make them. Get one of your guys to make your grenades. Them? All I can trust them to make is a crater. What do you do here? I'm Big Jim. Big Jim. I own the arena here. People shit in their pants when they hear they have to face me. And that means people won't cross the Duke if it risks them ending up in the arena with me. And the Duke knows the arena will earn him shards because people want to see me. About the arena. What are the rules? You'll find out when you get in there. You choose a challenger and you meet them in the arena. Then you fight. You win, you take the money. You lose, you take the injuries and you take them like a man. So you fight alone? One against one. You fight alone, you fall alone. Who can I challenge? Me, if you got the balls. Then there's Ike and Gunn. You might find a few others, if you think you got what it takes. Are you the only people I can fight? Well, there might be others you can persuade. But Ike and Gunn are the only full-timers. And like I said, you want to fight me, you got to fight them. Teach me something. Yeah.
Let's do some business. Are you ready to trade? Welcome, brave traveler. Though you have walked far and the journey has been hard, you have now arrived in paradise. That'll be 200 shards admission, please. I'm not paying you anything. You walked across the desert to the doors of paradise and you don't want in? Okay, no problem. I'll do you a deal. Keep this quiet, okay? What say I let you in for free this time round, and then you pay me double next time. Okay. You know a good deal when you see one. You may enter paradise. Welcome to the fort. Can you buy Elix here? Elix? Only if you want fuel for your next trip. The Doc's the best chemsmith here. He mixes Elix into all sorts of things. You can jack it and not worry about turning into an Alp. That Doc, he knows what Elix should really be used for. Freeing your mind. And that Alp Converter is going to help us all find freedom. Woohoo! You're not afraid of the Alps? Afraid? Fuck. I'm shit scared of them. I'm not an idiot. I don't want to die. And yeah, other people feel that way too. They stay away from the Converter and the Elix. Those Alps stuff their converter with everything that contains Elix, right? So they're doing the work for us. They set the machine up, we take the Elix. We liberate our minds. That's gotta be what the Duke is thinking. Why else would he let them stay there? He'll wait until that Elix is ready. Then we'll use our explosives to blast their asses back to Zaykor. And the people that end up in the converter don't bother you? Screw them! Assholes were dumb enough to get caught. Dumb asses. Tell me about this place. Like what? What do you want to know? What do you think I should know? Right... Uh... Okay, so, uh, where do I begin? Do you know about Baxter? Bloody Baxter? He used to be in charge here. Baxter turned the fort into what it is today. Before that, they were just a bunch of ruins, full of scrap. A place to piss in out of the desert sun. But with a vision, a dream, and just a touch of sadistic, overly brutal ass-kicking, Baxter turned a piss pot into a gold mine. So, what happened to Baxter? The Duke happened. 
The Duke and his family. The Duke had the muscle, the connections, the firepower. And that sister of his? Nasty. She had the brains. Found the weak spots in the defenses and brought the Duke's men right in here. So Baxter got out. Buck knows where he is now. Probably dead under a rock. But things aren't too bad under the Duke's leadership, I suppose. Life can be good if you don't cross him or his people. Tell me about his people. Well, there's his twin sister, Nasty. She can handle herself, but I get the sense she's bored in here. She looks after planning and things, but she's restless. Oh, and don't try talking to her unless you have something real to say. She can't stand small talk or people who don't get to the point. The point being shards or fighting. Then there's his cousin, William. Plays the big man. And there's his favorites, Chloe. Blake, Big Jim, and Mad Bob. Just don't go calling Bob Mad Bob to his face. When you're talking to him, he's the Scrap Baron. And you know, they all make shards, so we all make shards. And there's talk about plans. Plans to make the fort something big. What with the Alba tax and the clerics stealing our stuff, I think we're getting ready to show them we shouldn't be fucked with. So, right, 